Welcome back guys. Uh, I took my time and I went ahead and set up my Vagrant already. Uh, I knew I was going to run into trouble and I didn't want to go ahead and record all that and go through all the editing. So I already went ahead and uh, created my my uh, Vagrant Salt environment. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and explain exactly what I did. Um, initially, what we did was that we created the uh, Vagrant in it in the base in the base environment. I went ahead and removed that actually, so you can go ahead and, and move the um, you can remove the Vagrant dot Vagrant uh, directory, and you can also remove the Vagrant file. Uh, I'm sorry. You can also remove the Vagrant file, and in the in the previous directory in the dots in the where the base environment lives, you can run Vagrant in it there, and uh, download the same um, box that we did before. So, which was let me show you one second. It was here, so Vagrant in it, and then we specified the bento slash centos hyphen six point seven. So we ran this exactly. I'm not gonna run it, but I'll, I'll write it out exactly what happened. So we ran this. Um, so I removed it from the base environment, and then went went one uh, environment back. So that way, hey, this will encompass the base as well as dev and QA and so on. I know we wanted to run in, in or I said previously that I sh we should run only for the base. However, uh, for this VM, we'll leave the uh, the restricted environment for kitchen, but for the for the uh, Vagrant virtual box, we'll go ahead and, and run uh, all of the environments there and run a salt state and so on. So anyway, so I've got my Vagrant file here now in the, uh, in the uh, root of all the environments, including pillars, and I've created uh, an extra directory called Vagrant Salt. Uh, this is where my Vagrant configurations live, apart from the Vagrant file. So, like any other file that Vagrant might need, is also going to live here, and I'll show you what they are exactly. But first, I want to go ahead and explain what I've done with a Vagrant file. This is the original Vagrant file that is generated when you do the uh, Vagrant init. Um, I may made that a backup so I basically just renamed it uh, in case I needed it and I made a new vagrant file and I'm going to go ahead and, and go over what's with this vagrant file now okay so this is the vagrant file um, if you look if you're not familiar with vagrant then um, just keep in mind that it's in Ruby so this syntax is pretty much uh, full-on Ruby uh, so the only there's not much to do here. So we're configuring Vagrant, and the only thing we specify is the uh, is the box, which we said is a bento centos six hyphen uh, six hyphen sorry centos hyphen six point seven, and what we're all we're doing is that we're going to go ahead and um, and sync our local directory, which is wherever this Vagrant file lives, which is currently in my salt states directory. So right before the base dev pillars and so on uh, and sync that directory recursively to salt srv slash salt, salt states on the uh, virtual machine so that means all of these files are going to be go ha are are going to be available in the virtual machine including the vagrant files but we're going to go ahead and ignore the vagrant file being in the virtual machine it's not much of a problem so the next thing is I've got I've got to configure my VM. Now I tried installing this several different ways. I tried installing uh, Salt on the virtual machine via Git, and and the default yum since we're using CentOS the default yum uh, repository. The problem with the default yum repository is that by default the 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 Vagrant Salt package will only install the um, 2015 version, not the 2016 version, and I want to keep the version at least within the same year because on our on our uh, instances and in our servers we have 2016. So I want to make sure that my my VM is also going to have 2016. So 
I downloaded the Bootstrap Salt, and I'll post the uh, link on the description. I downloaded the Bootstrap Salt, and I put it in that Vagrant Salt directory. So it's wherever the Vagrant file is, which is you know uh, represented by the period in the Vagrant Salt directory slash boots, uh, Bootstrap slash Salt hyphen Salt. Excuse me. Uh, I set the verbosity to true because if you don't set this to true, then you basically have to wait there and hope to God that it's going to work. Um, also, what you also want to go ahead and sync the um, the minion config. The minion config is going to be a little bit different uh, compared to the minion config in the instances. And the only difference is that these minions are going to be running in masterless mode rather than the master and minion configuration we have in the servers. Um, and I also have it to run high state just upon whenever you provision the, uh, the virtual machine. So as soon as it, it comes up, it runs a high state and then, and then it basically goes from there. So if a high state fails, then you'll know exactly what's going on. Okay. So now that I've got set, let me go ahead and go over this file. This is one you can download uh, on on the uh, from the link. Just you know, put it in the in the. If you copy my my configuration exactly, just make sure you have a subdirectory named Vagrant Salt, and put the uh, file in there. Um, but let me go over this file real quick. So Okay, so this is that file. Now, if you recognize the this the roots, um, it's the same roots that we have in our minion in the EC2 instances or EC2 servers. The only difference is this this file client local. This is what states that this minion is going to be running in masterless mode. So it will look in these directories within the minion rather than trying to contact a master. That's the only difference. Okay. Since we're going to go ahead and sync these folders from our local machine to our virtual machine, the virtual machine, the minion in the virtual machine needs to look locally within itself rather than try to contact a master because I don't have a master set up. There's no point setting up a master in a, uh, in a virtual machine. We just want to go ahead and run it in masterless mode. It uses less resources and there's less to, uh, there's less of a hassle as well. So we're going to go ahead and run it in masterless mode and then it'll just run high state. All right, so let's go ahead and now that I've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and run Vagrant up and provision. Now, this is going to take a while. Um, basically, if you have that cert verbosity to true, you can see what it does, but it installs a whole bunch of packages and it'll also install salt. And once it installs salt, it'll go ahead and high state. Now, in an actual working environment, you want to go ahead and never destroy this virtual machine. You don't want to keep destroying and rebuilding because it's just going to take that much longer every time you do it. So what you want to do is you just want to keep provisioning over and over and over again while the machine stays up, or at least halt the machine and then bring it up and then keep provisioning it over and over and over again rather than destroying the machine, bringing it up, going through all this setup and so on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. I'm gonna wait for this to finish. And once this is finished, then I'll come back. All right, I'll see you guys then. Okay, and we're back. Now, it looks like our high state ran. Uh, it only installed the users because the web, what the Apache was not installed because the name of the minion did not begin with web. In fact, the name of this minion was, let's see if we have it. Um, it was just named local, in fact. So we can use Vagrant to name the minion. Uh, it's actually an option called minion underscore ID, and then we just pass it in the Vagrant file. So we can name it web and so on. And that being said, we'll, we'll do that later. There's no need to do that, uh, to go ahead and figure that out. So that being said, if you look at the verbosity, if you've enabled that, you get to see all the logs that you normally see in the log files for salt. And these are all the, um, these, these are almost debug level logs. Uh, go through this there. You won't see too much of, um, too many errors and you won't remember too much of these, but 
whenever you run into an issue with salt, especially if the end output is not is too vague, take a look at the um, take a look at the logs in var log salt minion. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and show you where they are. So let's log in with vagrant SSH. And if we go to, oh, let's first log in. Var log salt. Now, if you have a master, um, which we do in our server, we'll, the master file will say, uh, we'll have things in there. In this case, we don't have a master, we're running masterless, so there's no, there's no, um, there's no details in the master. I'm sorry, there's no data in the master file. So if we look at the minion file, um, it says error while bringing up minion for multi-master is master assault responding. Anyways, this is an error that I ran into previously because I was trying to run this minion without without stating uh, local in that minion config, and this is what happens: is trying to contact a salt master, and the salt master does not exist anywhere. Um, all right. So now that we got that taken care of, this is what we're going to use to test our states before we push it to our uh, to our branch, and then from the branch into the EC2 instances. Okay, so. If you have any questions, please do leave my leave some comments below. Um, next time, what we're going to do is we're going to set up kitchen for all of the individual states that we create, and once and then kitchen will just test out the individual states, and this vagrant will uh, it will go ahead and do a high state. So, if you have any questions, please uh, leave your questions below. Uh, our next project after we've got kitchen and everything set up is to do a uh, test infrastructure as I've as I've pointed out I believe I have the um, the page still pulled up uh, maybe not we will be going through uh, test infrastructure uh, this is pretty much it right here and well, what this is like an integrations test, integration test. It's a post deployment test. So we run these to go ahead and test out whether the server has got, you know, whatever file or, you know, Nginx. In this example, they're saying Nginx will be testing out if it, Apache's there and enabled and so on. And we'll be testing out our own, own infrastructure that way. Um, after that, the next project is to set up Elk Stack. Now we're going to be setting up a different uh, server from there on. Uh, we'll be setting up a uh, Ubuntu-based machine, and we'll set up Elk Stack, which is a centralized logging server. And then that then we'll have a Ubuntu machine as well as Red Hat machines, and then we'll have to use Grains to figure out a way to um, gather the logs depending on the different types of OS, different flavors of, uh, of Linux, and send them to, uh, send them to Elk Stack. All right, so uh, thanks for joining me. I hope to see you guys next time.